Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our May ACEWARE Users Webinar. We are now two months into the COVID quarantine and sure hope you and yours are remaining well. The state of Kansas is cautiously reopening in calculated phases. And yesterday, our ACEWARE team was back together for the first time and enjoyed an outdoor cookout, but did keep at a respectable distance from each other. It was great to be together again. Our 2020 conference is also going to be done at a distance this year. And I hope you've reviewed our virtual conference sessions on the website. Um, we have student manager and ACE web topics that were selected by you. And we have customer sharing sessions from those that were going to be from some of the presentations we would have had in Savannah. Two open forum sessions are going to be held on Wednesday and Thursday, and you'll be able to uh, talk with the ACEWARE staff and ask the questions related to ACEWARE that are on your mind. We'll have drawings for prizes each day, and we hope to have a good time, although we will certainly be missing you. But let's look at today's topic on document uploading. There were questions from you about this in April as you adjusted to your new office locations and wishing you had electronic copies of documents and they were in your paper files. But the ability to upload your required documents during registration does exist through ACEWEB. Jason provided a great piece on this in our May newsletter and today he'll demonstrate and talk about this ability. So use this question panel if you have questions for Jason at, or Chuck and I, and we'll be monitoring those and be able to respond to you directly or pass those along to Jason. And remember, if you would like to click this button right here, that'll close or minimize your panel so you can see full screen. So that is all of the housekeeping items I have. I'm going to turn things over to Jason so he can show us how to get those documents uploaded through ACEREP. It's all yours, Jason. Thank you, Sharon. Um, I'm assuming you can see my screen. We are seeing you fine. Awesome. So as Sharon mentioned, we are going to be talking about ACEWEB document uploading today. And in a nutshell, what that basically means is it gives the ability for your students to upload files through ACEWEB that you then have access to from within Student Manager. Now, right now, uh, this feature has been there for quite a while, but uh, I guess we got a lot of um, surprised comments that people didn't know that it existed. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about it today, how it works, what it does, and the plans for it in the future. So let's jump right in. So with document uploading, there are three main ways that your students will be able to get those files and uh, store them on your, your student manager server. One is on the enrollment cart process. So basically, any time they register for any course, they'll be presented with that link that they can click to go to the upload tool. So this isn't necessarily a required step in the registration process. It's simply enabling an option that provides the link for them to click that allows them to upload the files. So if you want it to be on every single registration that they do, then you can stick that on the enrollment cart page. If you just want this on a course by course basis, which I think the majority of people are gonna agree that's probably the better way to do this, then you can put it on a supplemental data capture page. And then the third and final way is on the student's profile page. And everything that I'm gonna be talking about in the, the first part of this webinar is things that exist with this feature right now. So you could go ahead and enable this feature and these will be the things that, or these would be the options that you have right now. At the end of this, we're gonna talk about some of the changes that we have planned. So let's take a look at some examples. So this here is an example of a supplemental data capture page. One of the great things is that you've got lots of room to add plenty of text if you wanna have really super clear instructions on you know, the whole process from downloading the uh, file 
making their changes or entering their input and then uploading it, you can do that with supplemental data capture. You wouldn't obviously want to stick that on your profile page because that could get a little bit cluttered. Uh, so this is just one of those examples. From the profile page, again, it's just going to be a link and it is customizable. So uh, like the previous slide, those waiver download and attachment buttons, they're simply links, but we have them styled as buttons. Um, if you need assistance doing that, you can get with your Ace, Ace Sport Tech and we can help you to style that. It doesn't look kind of just like a generic link because that could be easily missed. Uh, but from the profile page, there's going to be a link at the top that says attachments and it basically takes you to that tool where they currently have the options to select the file type, um, put in a little description and click upload. So right now it's kind of in its infancy, pretty basic, uh, but we do have lots more in store for this. So let's take a look. Uh, so what happens when they actually upload the file? Right now, we pretty much allow anything except for executable and DLL files. So you can have them upload pictures, um, documents, PDFs, whatever they like. In the future, we we're planning on being able to customize this so you can have a specific list or forbid, you know, certain types of files uh, or file sizes and things. So when they upload the document, right now it gets saved into a subfolder of your student manager folder called name docs. And then within that name docs folder, there will be another folder that is the ID number of the student that uploaded it. So you can see in my picture here, um, if VFPSM8 was Manager 8, then that would be a similar folder structure that most of you are probably familiar with. Underneath that is name docs, and then underneath that is the student's uh, NMID. Okay, so from the, let's go look at an actual walkthrough here, if I can get this right. So if we log on and we use my little document upload test course here, now, I didn't do this one on the enrollment card because, again, it's probably not going to be the most common option. So we'll take a look at the supplemental data capture page. So this would be the stage in the registration process where they would be presented with any of your other data captions. You know, if you're collecting other demographic info or T-shirt sizes, this is the same spot where this would show up if you wanted to enable the attachment upload. So in my example here, I've got just a, a simple waiver download link. Now, when you click this, it opens up in a new tab. Obviously, you don't want to interrupt the registration process because, again, we're in a data capture template. So this this is one step for registration process. We haven't finished the registration yet. So it opens up in a new tab, and then at that point, you know, they can download it. Um, depending on what PDF options you've got, um, they can then make those changes and then resubmit the file. So let's go back and close that tab. Now that I've got it downloaded, let's say I filled out the information, uh, maybe printed it out, signed it, and then copied it and saved it as an image, wh whatever the case may be. The next step is for them to actually upload it through AceWeb. To do that, they click this attachments link. And again, this also opens in a new tab so that it's not interrupting that registration process. So right now we've got a drop down where they can select, you know, the file type. Now this doesn't actually, um, isn't required to upload a certain type. And this list is customizable on the actual template that controls this attachments page. Um, but all this is going to do is add a short little uh, descriptor of what the file type is when you're looking at it from the student manager screen. And I'll show you that here in just a minute. So we're gonna say it's a PDF file Choose the file, and we'll say it's this 2020 waiver. And then here's my waiver. Thanks. Click Upload File, and then you'll get the message that it was successfully uploaded. And from that point, they're following the instructions. They can close that tab, go back here, finish their registration process. We'll go ahead and just finish that for your giggles. And they're done. So what happens on the student manager side? What, it, what are you as staff members going to be seeing? So we'll log into student manager and we'll pull up that student's name record. Now this is stored on the additional info tab. 
Um, you guys are probably familiar with this button. You may or may not be familiar with the button, but it's under Additional Documents. Click that, and it pulls up a kind of a, just a quick view of what files exist in that student's folder under Namedocs. So you can see um, it's got some other tests that I did there, and then it has the waiver with the type that I selected, which is PDF, and then the description that they entered. Now you notice if you hover your mouse over, it gives you the, the cheat sheet of what you can do from this screen. So if you wanted to remove one of these entries, you can double click it. Now that doesn't delete the file, that simply removes the, the log entry that's stored in Student Manager. Now if you want to actually view the file, you right click it. If I right click this, it's gonna launch a little window and then launch whatever your system um, Adobe Reader is, or if it was an image, it would launch whatever image, default image program you have. So again, we'll assume that that was filled out, but um, that's that. So that gives you the ability to open that file up. Now, if we wanted to see the actual files themselves, again, this is the manager folder. Underneath that is name docs, and then there's my student ID, and here we have the actual files. So one thing to keep in mind right now is there isn't really any correlation to these actual files, um, or the state of these files, and this window right here. This window is updated with the upload routine. So when they click that upload button from AceWeb is when it writes to this log. This doesn't actually look in the folder and tell you what files are in there it's simply recording which ones were uploaded. So if you delete a file out of the folder, keep in mind you'll probably want to come in here and double click the entry to remove it um, if you don't wanna have that document attached. Now, that being said, let's come back to our slideshow here. Maybe. And talk about some of the upcoming feature enhancements. So what we've been talking about and some of the things that we've heard from you guys are some better ways that you can kind of track this and just make it a little bit more fleshed out and um, easier to use for both staff and student. So a few of the things are a course tie-in so that you have better abilities to track and report on it. And what I mean by that is in my example, you know, I registered for this course, Document Uploads 001, but in Student Manager, um, that's not tracked here. I'm just looking at the name record, and it doesn't really have any sort of link to that file um, and that course. So what our plans are is that we tie in whatever course. So if it's on a supplemental data, it would be whatever course they're registering for. If it's on the um, enrollment card, if they enroll in multiple courses, then it would tie basically all of those courses to each file. Um, our plans for the profile page uh, are gonna kind of change a little bit in that we would like to use the history. So if we go to the My Account page and we look at the history, similar to like the payment status, we've got this table here that has all of the classes, you know, and if there was a balance due, you could check this box to pay it. We're gonna have another link from that uh, history page that's basically a document upload um, or a document management page where you can select upload on a course by course basis. That way you're tying that file that you're uploading to a particular course. Um, that's gonna help out with courses that need particular waivers, you know, photo releases, things like that that you want to actually have specific on a course by course basis. So. I think that is a pretty cool idea. Um, the next one I've got is store multiple files with the time and date of the upload track. So again, not only storing that course number, but the time and date of, of when the file was uploaded. Right now, if you upload the same file or it has the same file name, it's simply going to overwrite whatever exists in the directory. Our plans are to keep an incremental copy, similar to if you were to try and save the same file on your computer, it would append a little one in parentheses. We're gonna have a system like that that allows the student to upload a different one. Maybe they made a mistake and wanted to change that, but you need to have a history of, of the different ones or 
um, maybe it's it's homework assignments that they're turning in and they don't know that they need to actually rename the file, something like that. This will allow you to store all those files and keep track of the time and the date that they uploaded it. Um, uploading from the registration history page, we just talked about that. And then another cool thing is adding a validated flag for the staff members so that they can kind of verify the document. So let's say it's um, something that needed to be signed or digitally signed or filled out. This gives you the ability to have a staff member actually approve that or validate it, you know, saying that they opened it and checked everything was filled out properly. Um, that gives you a way that you can kind of track that. And if people are still missing it, maybe they just uploaded it without actually filling anything out. Um, this will allow you to actually see who you need to follow up with. Right now, I believe our plans for this would be from the course screen because it would make more sense, you know, from like a staff sending to an instructor the ability to check the whole class at once. Um, I know the question will come up about how can we report on this? Is there going to be a way to report on it? And, you know, just as with all tables in Student Manager, there will, there's a way. So um, I'm sure that one of us can come up with a, a pretty quick and dirty report that basically just checks that a file exists for a certain course um, in a certain time range or something like that. I think that's pretty easy to do. So, um, And then again, we talked about the final one there, customize what file types are allowed to be uploaded. Um, we definitely want to enhance that feature because as with any file upload system, you want to be careful of, uh, you know, people with malicious intent, if they were able to find the link somehow, you don't want to give them the ability to upload something dangerous. So, um, And that being said, this does not do any sort of virus scanning or anything like that. So there's going to be a modicum of common sense required if something does get uploaded and it's, you know, like a renamed executable file and then a staff member actually renames it and runs it, then and that is on you guys, because we don't have any way to actually scan these for viruses. Um, but you may want to have your IT staff add that name docs folder to the virus scan list. I know a lot of people have the entire manager folder excluded just because that can create a little bit of overhead. But um, yeah, you might want to have them re-add that. So that being said, uh, Sharon, did we have any questions so far? Well, you answered the question about reporting. There's a question about notifications. Is someone notify uh, doesn't upload? How is that notification sent? Is notification to registration staff that there's a document to look at? Great question. Right now, there are no plans to tie in the attachments system to the um, notification system. However, if you're doing this, for instance, on supplemental data capture and you are using the notify office feature, they would still get an email about that. Um, and so there, I guess there are ways where you could probably tweak like in the course notes, which are only displayable to staff. If you have it configured that way, you could put a note in there that says, you know, check the, check the upload, validate the upload, something like that. But right now there isn't any trigger to email staff just based on the upload alone. Okay, very um, good. So I do want to say uh, this is, again, are still in its infancy, and we definitely want to hear from you guys and see what your thoughts are. What are you dealing with right now in the, the new way that everyone is, is doing everything online? So give us your suggestions and, and be sure to let us know. Okay, just one second, Jason. I may have a question here for you. Is there a way that the registration staff themselves can upload the documents? That's another great question. The way that this works um, basically means that it's going to work seamlessly with the staff web access. So you could log in you know, to Manager Web, log in as a student, go to their profile page or the, the history and upload a document uh, for them through Manager Web. I think that's what you're asking, so uh, yes. Sounds good. Lots of good information, Jason, and, and we're having fun here at Aceware of trying to kind of visualize how this uh, expanded document upload system would work, but you guys have the best ideas. Do 
works and those are ways so if we start to develop that we can incorporate some of the great ideas that you get and if you have other questions certainly contact your techs contact any of us and we will be glad to help so we only had two pieces of homework for you this time get signed up for the virtual conference the first week of june and to send us your ideas on how document upload could work best for your unit. With that, we've, we are respectful of your time and we're gonna let you all get back to work, stay safe, and we hope to see you in a couple weeks for conference. Bye now. Thanks everybody, bye.